In a previous lesson, we introduced the definitions of supremum and infimum of a set. Then, we proved this equivalent definition for the supremum of a set, which says the same thing but in a slightly different way. Recall that the original definition of supremum of a set is that the supremum, if it exists, is an upper bound that is less than or equal to any other upper bound. It's the least upper bound of the set. This equivalent definition starts the same way that the supremum must be an upper bound, and then it says that if we reduce the supremum at all by subtracting any real positive number epsilon, we will no longer have an upper bound. Because of course, the supremum is the least upper bound, so we can't reduce it and get another upper bound. Now with these definitions in hand, we can start to prove some supremums and infimums of sets. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll use this definition to prove that the supremum of the set of reciprocals of natural numbers is equal to one. And I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson where we prove that this definition is equivalent to the original definition of supremum. Quickly, why would we suspect that the supremum of this set is equal to 1 in the first place? Well, the elements of the set are just reciprocals of natural numbers, so they look like this. And we can see clearly the elements are just going to get smaller and smaller after the maximum 1 over 1. And it seems pretty clear that the maximum of a set, if it exists, should also be the least upper bound. And indeed, that result is true, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. The maximum of a set is always the supremum, so we could apply that here and be done with it, but let's prove it from scratch with the definition of supremum. First, we want to prove that one is an upper bound of our set. How can we do that? Well, certainly, every natural number n is greater than or equal to 1. So we could say n is greater than or equal to 1 for every natural number n. Dividing both sides of this inequality by n yields that 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over n for every natural number n. Thus, we have that 1 is an upper bound of our set. 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over n for every natural number n. Just like that, we have satisfied the first condition. All that remains is to show that for any epsilon greater than zero, one minus epsilon is not an upper bound of our set, and that couldn't be easier. So we say let epsilon be greater than zero. Note that one is an element of our set, right? When n is equal to one, that gives us the element one over one, which is one. So one is an element of our set, and what's the last important detail? Since epsilon is positive, one minus epsilon is certainly less than one. And that means that one minus epsilon is not an upper bound of our set, which is what we wanted to prove, because it's less than one, which is an element of our set, so one minus epsilon is not an upper bound. And so we've proven the second condition. Now we've proven that one is an upper bound of the set of reciprocals of natural numbers, and and we've proven that if we subtract any positive number from one, we no longer have an upper bound. Thus, by definition, the supremum of the set of the reciprocals of natural numbers is equal to one. For a practice problem, I recommend using a similar technique to prove what the infimum of this set is equal to, and a little bit of thought should be able to clue you in to what the infimum probably is, then go ahead and try to prove it. And we'll do that in a future lesson. I'll leave a link to it in the description once that is out. I hope this video helped you understand this simple supremum proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.